Now, going forward, you know, there are many things that the ulama recommended, especially the last part of Ramadan. Number one, there's the times two rule. The times two rule. Um, Al Imam bin Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala, he said that the ibadah of the salaf doubled in the last 10 nights. Meaning what? The amount of Quran I was reading in the first 20, I should strive to double it. Actually, give yourself, it helps sometimes to have that benchmark, right? Not, that, not just that I'm going to read more, but no, I'm going to double it. The amount of nawafil, the amount of dhikr, I'm going to double it. As much as I can in the last 10 nights, that should be my goal. If I had a regimen that was going strong in the first 20, then I want to make sure that I double it, inshaAllah ta'ala. Um, in the last part of Ramadan. And you know, really, you know, finding that balance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you so much as well. Imam al-Zuhri says in the authentic hadith, and uh, authentic narration of Tirmidhi, he says, At-tasbihatu fi Ramadan. One subhanallah in Ramadan. Everyone just do me a favor and say subhanallah. One subhanallah in Ramadan is equal to a thousand outside of Ramadan. It's authentically narrated from... So when you just say subhanAllah right now in Ramadan, it's like saying it a thousand times outside of Ramadan. Everything is multiplied exponentially already in Ramadan. So try to find habits inshallah ta'ala as you're going forth that you're going to be able to keep outside of Ramadan and don't despair. Don't despair. Don't wake up the day after and say, you know what, I didn't catch it. You know why? Because the Prophet said in the authentic hadith of Abu Huraira in Al-Bukhari, he said that if a person wakes up at Fajr, or wakes up after Fajr in fact, and missed the dhikr, their portion of remembrance throughout the night, and they pray it between Fajr and Dhuhr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would write it down for them as if they did it during the night. It's the rahmah of Allah. You wake up in the morning, you thought, you know, you, you put your alarm for 3 a.m. and you woke up at suhoor, right, two minutes before Fajr, right, or you woke up at Fajr, then make sure that you pray the same amount after Fajr, after Duha, after the sun, the sunrise, that you would have prayed in the night. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will write it down for you as if you did it during the night. Have husn al in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Assume well of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that is the greatest ibadah. Um, we're, we're really running uh, close to, to, the, to the end of time. We, we are over time actually. You know, I apologize for that. But inshallah ta'ala, I'll ask you just to share a few thoughts inshallah ta'ala. And then I have a very big announcement inshallah ta'ala, a very strong announcement. Actually, it's really going to be, you know, everyone keep tuning in inshallah ta'ala because there's something heartwarming I want to share with everyone as well that I wasn't planning to, but it's a surprise for everyone inshallah. So just a few minutes inshallah, if you can share your thoughts going strong in the next part of Ramadan inshallah. As-salamu alaykum. as These ayat are shared at the beginning of Ramadan and one of the benefits of them that isn't, again, much talked about is shahr Ramadan and that we unzi that in the Qur'an hulan bin nas wabayyinatim minal huda wal furqan. In these ayat, Allah Azza wa Jalla tells us that the month of Ramadan is the one in which the Qur'an came down. Uh, and then he says the, word, the words, Hudal nas guidance for people. The grammarians actually break the ayah down two different ways. And one of the ways that you can understand this first part of the ayah is, the month of Ramadan in which the Qur'an came down is guidance for people. I'll say that again. The month of Ramadan the month in which the Qur'an came down itself, the month itself, is guidance for people. In other words, it is an open door, this month is an open door, not just for the Muslims, but for all of humanity to get closer to Allah's guidance than any other time. It's not just the Qur'an that is guidance for humanity, according to the language of the ayah, it is also the month of Ramadan that is guidance for humanity. Now you have to ask yourself, and I have to ask myself, if Allah is opening the doors of guidance to all human beings, the most far away, the ones that have completely lost sight of Allah, even for them, this month is an opportunity, then what to speak of Muslims? And at least we Muslims, at least the ones that are sitting here listening, and so many more, they are concerned with guidance. Like if there's one thing we want out of life, that we keep asking Allah for, is guidance. Every single fatiha, right? And Allah Azza wa is telling us this is the month that it is being offered openly. So we have to kind of refresh our intentions that this is not just a month that we're spending in, in worship to Allah. This is kind of a rebirth. And this is a recommitment of whether or not I want to live by Allah's guidance. Whether or not I want Allah to have a role in my life or not. So what I have left of this Ramadan really, let's just make that a, the, the strong beginning to the rest of our lives. You know, and that's really, it is what that is. It is one of those opportunities in the life of a believer where all of their sins can get wiped out. And they can have a fresh start. 
And if that's the case, I don't know if you and I are going to see the next Ramadan again. So at least make that new commitment with Allah Azza wa Jal and reconnect with the guidance. And the one last comment I'll say about that also is that everybody knows that these ayat are madani. Everybody knows that these ayat came well after the Prophet ﷺ had moved to Medina when the ayat of fasting were revealed. And if you look at the ayat of fasting, the new information is it's the month in which the, guide, the Qur'an came down. But the Muslims already knew that the Qur'an is guidance for humanity. Hudan lin nas. And the Muslims already knew وَبَيِّنَاتٍ مِنَ الْهُدَى They also knew that, it's, that these are clear miraculous proofs as part of the guidance. وَالْفُرْقَانِ And it's the, the book that distinguishes between right and wrong and it's the criteria, the standard by which right and wrong is judged. Did we already know that? The Muslims already know that? Yes. But it's being as though even the Muslims of Medina, the, the Muhajirun and the Ansar all together, they are being reintroduced to the Qur'an in this ayah. It's remarkable. This is the Qur'an has been, the majority of the Qur'an has already been revealed. It's already been revealed. But in this ayah, Allah didn't just introduce us to the fact that Ramadan is the month that revelation began, but He actually decided to reintroduce the entire Qur'an to us in this ayah itself, which is a huge ishara, it's a huge indication to all Muslims that we have to basically act like we've never learned this book before and start fresh again this Ramadan and what is left of it. So let's take that seriously inshaAllah ta'ala and do a tajdeed of our relationship, a renewal, a refreshing of our relationship with the Qur'an as if we just became, we just got acquainted with this treasure.